Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this, the 18th of October, 2023, a Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you guys here. Big who did it out there going on. Some people are saying Israel did it. They blew up the hospital. Now, if you guys haven't heard, there's a hospital blowing up in Gaza. Tremendous tragedy. And some people out there are blaming Israel. Uh, but, I want to take a, just a quick look at this and use logic and logical deduction. Think about three possibilities. One, that it could have been some sort of an accident. That it was not planned by either side. Another possibility is it was planned by one side or the other. I mean, and, and there would only be two sides to this. It would be Hamas and Israel. So if, if, you're gonna, if it was planned, then who did it? Well, who did it would be who bene could benefit from this. Who would have the biggest motive to do this? It would be more likely... Uh, you got to think about that and take that in consideration because if it was planned, would it be a strategic advantage for Israel to actually do this? I think it would be one of the biggest strategic blunders because it would it would bring uh, it could have the possibility of bringing Iran and Hezbollah into the war, and I really don't think Israel wants to do that. Now, what about Hamas? Well, if Hamas did it, it would be a strategic bonus because it would bring Iran and it would bring in reinforcements for Hamas. And I'm just saying, I'm just looking at it logically. That's my logical assessment on it, the situation. Do I know what happened? No, I don't. And Biden, though, he thinks he knows what happened. Biden says Israel does not appear to be involved in the hospital blast based on what he's seen. What has he seen? Interesting. Let's move on. Uh, Germany, because of the end of the cutting off, because the central banks are cutting off money supply to everything, Germany's construction industry is into a crisis now. It's collapsing down the hill. Red alert. Worldwide riots. Embassy stormed. Military basis on alert. Declaration of war. Canadian Prepper's a great channel. And he's doing a great job covering this situation. And uh, so I, I tune in from time to time to see what's happening. Uh, I also tune into a lot of other channels to find out what's going on. Because I'm here in Canada. I'm stuck here in Canada. And, but I do have internet that goes around the world. And I put a lot of thorough research into what's going on in the world each and every day. And as it's moving faster and faster and the situation's moving faster and faster, it requires more work. But I hope it's a benefit to you guys. Now, moving on. Uh, where were we here? Uh, <laughs> President Biden delivers remarks from Tel Aviv. Uh, I was watching the video of it, and I was thinking to myself, is he well? He looks kind of frail. Kind of frail. But, anyway... Situation going on here uh, with the president in this dangerous war zone, and it is a war zone. France evacuates six regional airports after threats of attack. Uh, French media is they're receiving bomb threats and stuff in these different airports. Lyle, Lyon, uh, 
Nice, Nantes, Toulouse, uh, uh, and Burel's airports evacuated. So, I mean, this is going to create a traveling situation. That this could get an awful lot worse. Gosh only knows how many these countries have stationed moles in other countries or what I guess what they call them sleepers or whatever in other countries gosh only knows how much infiltration's gone on over the years we could be going back to situations like we experienced back during 9-11 when when this war breaks out, I say when this war breaks out because, by gosh, it doesn't look like thing, things are backing away from war. And the point in which the world backs away from war and cringes from it is when they've learned what it really means. They're, they got, this whole new generation here has got to learn. They've got to witness it for themselves. they got to experience suffering to the point where they can't, where it nauseates them. To the point where they come around to the table and say, hey, we don't want war anymore. But I, I hate to say it, in the nuclear age, by the time they get to that point, we might all be in an awful, awful mess. And it's the people. Uh, people are who creates wars. And it's got to do with their mental attitude. They can create peace just as equally, just as easily. But they have to get to that point where that's what they want is peace. Where they beg for peace. Because right now they're begging for war. And it's sad because they're going to have to experience this. If you're stuck on this planet with them, the aliens must be looking down saying they're, they're totally insane. They've all lost it. Those humans down there, they've all lost it. Pity them, you know. Okay, silver price today is down four cents. Talk about insanity. <laughs> is it these low prices on this stuff, <laughs> you know. But this isn't going to last forever. Fuel prices go up. The price once this stuff becomes unhinged and starts to actually look really right right now i've never ever seen the market so to the point where only die hard stackers now at this point are still like saying hey you know we love silver everybody else is like ugh, nobody wants that stuff it's never gonna go up they say never ever ever and i mean that's what they say just before the big one the big move <laughs> it always happens that way just when you really, really got to the point where you say, eh, oh, it'll never happen, boom. That's how it gets you. You go in, if you go in, you sell all of it, what you got, and then the next day it goes to the moon. It just does that. That's Murphy's Law. It's kind of like if you got a jam sandwich, you know, <laughs> and you got a white carpet, or if you've got a carpet that's the color of the jam. Well, if you got a carpet that's like the red, the color of the jam, say it's raspberry jam, right, and your carpet's the exact same color, the odds of it coming down face first into the carpet is almost zero. It'll always land on the bread side if your carpet is the color of the jam. But if you got a white carpet, it's 100% for sure that thing off that jam sandwich will flip down and land jam side first into that carpet. That's Murphy's Law. And that's the way with silver. If you sell your silver, the very next day it'll go to the moon. <laughs> that's Murphy's Law. It's out to get you. <laughs> okay. Uh, taking a look at uh, cryptocurrency today. We're looking at Bitcoin at 28,252. So it's holding its gain it made. Ethereum is at 1570. And XRP is at 48.8 cents. And taking a look at the Dow Jones today, and it's down 167 points at 33,636. 
I'm not sure what it'll do if war actually... I mean, I'm talking about full-scale war breaks out. I know it's already war, but I mean, you know, it goes big time. And the U.S. gets involved, brutes on the ground. I'm not sure what this market's going to do. Might go down at first and then go up later. I just not... I haven't experienced really the, the effects of, um, of war on a market uh, firsthand. I suppose history could teach us, but maybe it doesn't respond exactly the same way every time. But I do know that that's a big wild card to throw in there on the market to see what the market will re how the market will respond to it. Uh, taking a look now at uh, crude oil. Crude oil is up a dollar twenty-eight. I'll tell you if this this war in particular is the war that's going to have a big effect upon the price of crude oil if this war breaks out. And I think we're right on the edge of it breaking out. In fact, I'm sitting here waiting. And I'm saying to myself, hey, any time the announcement might come in over the news, it's, it's on. And, uh, you know, I mean, and then we'll see the crude price shoot up. Especially if the Gulf of Hormuz gets cut off. Ugh, 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 ugh. A nightmare scenario. Could be $300 a barrel oil. And that would mean the price at the pump would triple. From where it is now. So what is it right now? Uh, about three seventy-five in the U.S. Four dollars, right in that area. So where it is right now? You imagine twelve-dollar gas. And and maybe uh, the pumps will have a big sign on it that says we're out of gas today, even at twelve bucks, or a big long line of people waiting to get that twelve-dollar gas ahead of you. That must might be. That's an economic nightmare. Because almost overnight, food prices will double. So, so think about what you pay for food right now, what you pay for gas every month right now. And think about those prices maybe going up three times what they are, but your wages don't go up. And your rents will probably still go up even higher. So this is going to lead to a whole new army of people, people who are going to be on the street a whole new army of them. And they're not going to be drug users. You know? I mean, a, a serious drug user, you know, who's in a, a stupor every day, laying in the alleyway, he is, uh, he is not going to be out there uh, smashing windows on people's houses and climbing in through the window and stuff and taking things and stuff. Because he's he's laying there, you know where he's at. He's in the he's on the street corner, laying there in a stupor, all day. But you get these people who are not drug users and stuff, and they're out of a job and everything else, and they're desperate, and they're running out of money for food and stuff for their kids and stuff like that. You don't know what they're capable of is big or big, much bigger stuff. And we might be seeing the tip of the iceberg of this coming your way very soon might be homelessness could increase by the a factor of the power of 10 across North America and we're not talking about the same people we we're talking about before uh, the homeless these are a different class of homeless people these are people who used to have a job and now thanks to this new economics they got out there, and I'm not even going to name it, I'm not going to say who it's named after. We see a situation like this developing. Thank you very much. Of course, I'm being kind of sarcastic there with that thank you, but uh, U.S. 10-year Treasury. And, uh, here, Here's another crisis in the making right here happening right now but there's so many other big crises these smaller crises like german the german factories and stuff like that these smaller crises aren't even being noticed now like even the war in ukraine i haven't said a word about it this morning because you can't it's all happening too quick it's quickening right now Uh, U.S. 10-year. Look at this. 4.91. It's up 
six basis points. 6.8 basis points. And you are 30 years over 5. 5.01 rising. And it's up 6.2 basis points. Remember I told you that 10 year if it goes over 5%? It's at 4.91 and climbing. So this is a crisis in the making right here. But it's being overlooked because it's just too much going on out there. It's hard to get it all covered for crying out loud. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. And have a great afternoon. And thank you guys. And we'll see you guys later and have a great time this afternoon. And enjoy your life. And we'll catch you later. Bye-bye.